Hello guys, welcome to GTV Presents Tech View. Another episode. In this episode, I'll show you um, how you can monitor your infrastructure. So that means I will talk about the monitoring the entire environment here. So your entire infrastructure environment. That means your server, um, your application, and server means not only the physical server, it's the physical, virtual, Azure cloud, AWS cloud, whatever the places you have a server. So entire environment monitoring tools. So now we need to know actually what kind of monitoring tools we need to implement and then how. Let's get started. Okay. Um, so first I just want to show you here some uh, monitoring tools in the market. So there's a lot of monitoring tools out there. And today actually I will discuss with SolarWinds SAM, Server and Application Monitoring. That's why it's called it SAM, SolarWinds SAM. And I'll show you how to install SolarWinds SAM and also how to configure it. That means after installation, how you can configure the alert. How, how to generate the alert, right? That's what I'm gonna show you in a complete video. But in here, I want to show you there is a lot of other tools you can use. So it's not like you you know SolarWind, but if you, your next role if or with any other company, maybe they're gonna use some other tools. That's not a problem. So most of the company, use SolarWinds, some of the company use um, uh, Manage Engine, um, PT, uh, PRTG, Logic Monitor, Javix, Negos. So Javix and Negos is a open source. It's a free tools. So um, you can also go with this. And, and the SolarWinds monitoring tools is not that much. Like if you have a like, around 400 server or something like monitor 400 and also some other 500 virtual machines is going to cost you around ten thousand dollar a year so it's not gonna it's not that much money for a company i'm just giving a rough a rough idea it's not going to be exactly right so in this in this video, I'll show you how you can install and configure the SolarWind, right? So our today's subject is SolarWind. So you have to download the SolarWind and SolarWind SAM. So what you can do, you can say search here, SolarWind SAM. Download. So if you click here, download so and Sam, it's a download free trial. Go here and you're gonna you need to provide some information here. So if you don't provide any exact information, it still is work fine and just proceed to free download. It's not gonna send you the link to your email address. It's just I think they just want to collect your information. That's it. So um if you don't want so well, and after you fill it up this and proceed to the free download, you, you're gonna get the download option here. And then you can down, download it. So I already downloaded the software, uh, which is, and also I have, I already built a virtual machine, Windows virtual machine, I built it already here uh, with SolarWind, you see the name is uh, SLV WMON, SolarWind Monitoring. So for virtual machine, because I want to have a dedicated virtual windows virtual machine to install the solar ring so it's going to be a solar ring monitoring server so i i'm not going to go over with the how i created a virtual machine and what kind of uh, how i installed the uh, windows operating system that's all you guys already know so i'm going to just start like i i created this machine and also um I change all the regular stuff. So what do we need to do each and every virtual machine? What that's what I did, and also I send an IP address here. You see here the IP address, and also I did provide the name and also I added the machine with the domain. 
So everything is done, the machine is ready, and also we need the solar and software, right? And that's also I downloaded here. Uh, if you um, download folder, solar solar stem installer evaluation. But before we start the in, uh, installation, I want to show you one thing. Actually, right now I'm logged in this machine as a beam as as the uh, beam serve. Uh, I want to log out from here. Say log out. Oh, sorry. I'm going to shut off. Not sorry. Sign up from here. And I'm going to create a service account. I'm going to create a service account for um, SolarWin. So uh, this is my Active Directory, and I need to go to the activity users and computers, right? The way we all the time we create. So user accounts and service accounts, I'm going to create a one service account. So I'm, I'm just going to copy the other one, um, whatever the permissions they have, copy. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to, copy the whole profile from other service account. So I say, and this one is solar wind. Solar winds, last name is service account. Service account, and it's gonna be SOLR, solar W-I-N-D, solar winds, A-D-M-I-N, solar winds admin, okay. Click next and the password. Okay, all right. So the password is created. Uh, now I need to check actually. This service account is member of what? So it's a member of RDP, it's a member of system admin. So RDP, that means this user assigned as a local administrator to any, all of the virtual machine in my environment because I applied it through the GPU policy, which is, I can show you here. So I created a group policy and also I have a group name RDP. So, the SolarWind monitoring, uh, sorry, uh, Solar, SolarWind uh, admin, so this service account is a member of RDP group. And then RDP group is assigned as a local administrator to all of my Windows server in my environment through the group policy. You see a group user local permissions. So check it out here. You see the RDP? Where it shows RDP, SLB RDP, you see, building administrator. And also, and also, this user is a member of what? What else? This user is a member of system admin. The so system admin, and this system admin, this is a system admin group name. This is a group. So, this group, system admin group is assigned to a SQL Server database. So automatically, now SolarWind has a login, like, like login privilege access to the SQL Server also. So whenever we're gonna install the SolarWind, we need to connect database, right? Okay. So this part is done. You see, I didn't. I don't need to add manually. I just added with one time. Now, just I'm just copying the profile. That's the easy way I can create a service account, right? Okay. Um. So, what's the next? Next is we're gonna start the installation, right? Oh. Where is your stem? Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm. Sorry, 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 sorry. I have to log in, sign out. So I'm going to log in Sam as a SolarWind administrator. So S L A R W I N D S SolarWind. Oh, sorry. SolarWind 
admin. Everything is same. Just I just say because the, I use the same password, so I don't need to change anything else. Okay, just go. Solar Winds admin, right? That's what I provide. What? S O L A R W I N D S A D M I N. Let's see. Okay. Let's see actually what the user is. Properties and Solar solar winds ADMIN. Yes, I did the same one, right? I don't know what mistake I have. Doesn't have the RDP access. Why? So let me check the user group RDP member. So solar wind service account is the member of. RDP group, and that RDP group is already assigned, so it shouldn't make any kind of issues. If Beam service account has an as a, you see here, Beam is the member of this, right? So Beam service account was able to log in the same thing, service account. So Lauren service account, right? So I should have access. Let's try it again. Okay, no worries. Let me log into Beam again. Beam, SRV, and try the Beam. Okay, Beam SRV is working, but why not? Um, so let's check it out here. What's the problem with our? So how we can check it? It says computer management. The local account groups. Administrator, so RDP, RDP is already assigned. Let's add, I'm, I'm going to just, you don't need to, but since it's not working, so range, ADMIN, Okay. Oh, this user account cannot disable cannot be used. Okay. Why this user account is disabled? I never. the password maybe the password is not the right one welcome one okay so i changed the password and everything is good i don't know what happened yes it's working so it's, it was a password issue actually so i ruined service account so i logged in with this so i service account on this machine. So the way I assign it individual on the local machine, you don't need to because it's already a member of a domain. So the only problem was when I created the SolarWind service account and that I assigned the password, I put the wrong password. That's why. 
So that's why I just reset it with the same one, the one I'm assigning here. Now it's working fine. It should be work. So it's working now. And where is my uh, software? So the software is in another profile. You, so every time when you log in a Windows machine with different different user, it's created as user profile. So if you go to the um, users, you see here in this machine, I log in as administrator, which is local one. I log in as a solar admin and I log in as a beam server. But what I downloaded the software on beam serve download folder, right? So you have to go to the beam serve. Then download and then you're gonna get it. So I'm going to copy this one from this here to here. Okay, so now I have here. Anyway, so I, we can start. All right, so we are ready to install. Uh, so we have the software, we have our machine ready. So, and also we have our service account ready and we logged in the Windows machine as a, through our service account. So right click on the software and then say run as administrator. And yes, so the installation process takes uh, it will take about like more than an hour. So on the background is working, you see how long you have to wait. So now it's showing solar installer. It's installing the .NET framework, whatever is needed is going to be installed automatically. So the frame, now it's installing Microsoft uh, Solarin, they call Microsoft .NET framework version 4.8. If it is not installed, Solarin will or see here, it says, if, if this version is not already installed, Solarin would install the Required .NET framework version before installing your Solarin application. So it's looking right now. And we have to wait. All right, it's almost done. We just need to wait uh, just a couple of minutes. So we're gonna look at the documents here. Service description, this is the structure should be. And so solar version, it depends on what, whenever you are installing, whatever the current version is, install the current version, uh, your operating system, your like uh, SQL server, whatever the version you want. So you can download. So if you company purchase uh, the software, then you can log in as a customer. And then you can download the offline installer or you can download the just the one I'm installing right now. It's going to be instruction process is going to be done by the uh, through the internet. So online installation and software requirement. Here is some software requirements. What should be the minimum memory, minimum hardware space, minimum CPU. So which we already have. It says minimum of uh, 6 GB to some minimum 8 GB or 16 GB or minimum. 16 to 32 GB. So I assign it 8 GB. We can increase it. It's not. It's not a problem. We have a virtual machine. Anytime we can increase it. And Orion server hardware requirements is what should be the hardware requirements. So our installer. Okay. Our database server, SQL server requirements. So Express standard enterprise all version is supported. So no issues. We have 2019, and also we are going. We are maintaining. SQL Server always on. So through the listener port, we can connect. The SAM installation, SAM means SolarWind application, server and application monitoring. So download the version, okay, that's what we already did. And then very soon we're gonna see this screen. Standard installation, lightweight installation, and add scalability engine. So uh, let's wait to see this screen. It's almost done.
So it's so sort installer, start installer wizard. So it's gonna take a little bit of time and the whole process is gonna be take more than an hour. So the waiting time, I'll pause the video because I don't want to, I, I don't want to waste the time. All right. It's coming up and it's going to be a little bit slow because it's going to be installed through the online. And you see that this is your installed SolarWinds flat from 2024.1. Please close all uh, other application before continue so we can update relevant system file without requiring a reboot. Okay, that's fine. We don't have any anything open. So start. And now, standard platform and scalability add-on standard requirements. Okay, install the main pulling engine database and web console, record SQL server, a SQL server or SQL server express, which we already have. So we can select this one. So in the documents I have here, this is actually old version installation documents. This is the new one. So it's already by default selected, just click next. And then it's a license agreement. There is no alternatives. You have to check mark on it and click next. And then installation option, use SQL Server and or use install SQL Server Express. So you can say use SQL Server and also destination folder is gonna go to the C drive. If you have any other drive, so you can, you can, change it like you have an e drive change the e drive later or you can just browse it whatever you want and click next so i'm going to, i'm going to put it on the c drive okay so an ms sql server 2016 or newer so is it's alerting me insufficient ram that means memory right domain admin account Okay, if your group policy is applied to your account, you may encounter permission issues. Okay, that's I understand. And so only one thing I have alert is alert is fine. I can go with it. Um, confirm you have a SQL Server 2016 or newer. Yes, confirm. Okay, so I can go with it. But before I go this, I can increase the disk size. Where is my um actually this one is on my this node under this maybe infrastructure okay here so I can increase the uh, RAM right now I have four oh sorry I have a less so make it 16 I have enough it's not an issue and the CPU is change it to say eight. And okay. Okay, so let's change. If you look at the hardware, C CPU uh, CP is eight, memory 16, right? Oh, I have a Hadis number two. So I can, oh. I got, oh my God. Okay, I have to restart it because you know, the ones the software is installing in the meantime i i actually increase it that's why it's looking for your start let's have a year started but so but we have to start again the process that's the problem so you shouldn't do that before you uh, start install the uh, uh, what is called uh, solar software same application software uh, make sure your VM is configured or, or your machine is configured with record CPU and memory.
So now um, maybe I have to redo again, like run the APK uh, software again. Okay, it's, it's powered on now. So I can start work, just double click on it. You can, you'll be able to log in. So learning service account. So again, right click, run as administrator. It will take a little bit of time. You have to wait. The so same process I'm running again. So but right now, uh, .NET framework is already installed. It's not gonna take that long to install. Like last time it was installed. So Solar installer. Start installer zero. So it's not showing the, the previous window, right? Because the dot is already installed. Okay, so start this one next. Check market next. Use SQL Server, and you see here I have a drive E right. So I can put it on E also. Browse. or what I can do, I don't need to do like this, I can just change it E, that's it. Next. Okay, so right now no error, right? No alert, and SQL Server, we're gonna use the SQL Server 2016 or newer, we have 2019, so that's fine. All system check fast, so you don't have any issues. Just say install. So now it's downloading the installer. This is, is gonna take time, long time. You have to wait. So it's just started with 2%. It's gonna download and install. So um, I'm going to pause the video and whenever I need, I, I'll just you know, uh, like resume the video again. All right, so it's already 72% done. And I started at 324, and right now it's 342. So it's 12 minutes plus six minutes is 18 minutes already done. Within 18 minutes is 73% done. So we have to wait a couple of more minutes. All right, this shows is 99%, just 1% left. So I'm just waiting. So it's taking time because of it's downloading to online. If it is offline bundle, it's, it's gonna be more faster. All right, is done. The downloading is done now. It's gonna show you. And the screen shortly. Okay, so now it's asking me the SolarWinds platform configuration wizard. 
Visual Deadline Micro Subminars Information Services IIS is required. So click yes to install missing IS OK components. That's fine. Click yes. IS eight components is installing right now. All right, so this says welcome to the SolarWind configuration manager. Now we can start the configuration. Click next. So IS, IS is already installed. I will just click next. SQL Server. Now provide the SQL Server information here. So authentication. Um. We're gonna assign SQL Server. Let's let's log in to our SQL Server. Uh, we have always on environment SQL Server always on. Okay. So if you have it just only one SQL Server instance, in that case you're gonna provide the instance name. This one you have to provide this one, right? But in our case we have a, a SQL Server always on, so we're gonna provide the listener name so which is slv sql lst01 and let's do this okay so what are you gonna do uh, uh sql listener rec slv sql lst01 Make sure you have the right information. SLV SQL LST01. Then authenticate as a current logged in user. Which is the one I logged into the machine. That means this, this one. Um, this one. Solar service account. So Solar service account already have access here. How? Because on the security logins, I have a user group name SQL admin and SolarWin server system admin service account is a member of this group. So that means the service account has access here. So and also in the box, in here I logged in through service account, right? So I can use authenticate as a current logged in user. Or I can go with the, this one, it's up to me, click next. Okay, so it's gonna create a new database and database name is SolarWinds Orion, I can say zero one, just, you don't need to, but I'm saying like, if you want, you can modify it. And we have a plan to show you in two different ways. That's why I'm just providing zero one. Click next. Now it says use a SQL Server account to access the database. So Lawrence or your database user. So you can provide a password or you can use the existing one. Use the Windows as your user, an existing account, existing account. Create user SQL Server account to access the database. Create a new account for this one. Password and confirm password. This is a username, but I don't need. I can use an existing user, existing account. Just this one. Sorry. to access the database, okay. And uh, password. Okay. So now all IPs is for three or you can say this is the IP. Okay, enable, general self sign. So it should be check mark. Click next. Now, load the event monitoring required separate database. Please log an event database on a 
same SQL Server or place a login event database in a dedicated SQL Server recommended high volumes. So it's a recommended high volume. So if you want to have, because uh, for the event log, if you want to separate database, you can just go with this one. But if you want to like get the event log and the SQL the, um, uh, SolarWinds database, everything in a one database, then you can just select the first option, click next. Now create a new database, recommendation for new database, SolarWinds log. So log is gonna be create. You can say log zero one. Next, okay. SQL Server listener. This is the port, right? And authenticate as a current login user, or you can log in a switch user with Windows, right? So I'm going to use the same one. And now create a new database recommended for SolarWinds uh, for storage. Say zero one. Click next. And now finally, SolarWing admin, click next, okay, and click next. So everything is configured now, it's just going to be inst installing, like whatever that is configured now is installing. Basically, this is the configuration, configure SolarWinds platform. So we have to wait again, it's a waiting game again. Oh, it says database failed. If we go here, just select it, refresh it. SolarWin or M01 is created. You see here, it's just created. Okay, cannot add SLB, SolarWin, admin, user to database. Look, finish. Okay, it says it cannot. That case, what we wanna do? If if this is the case, in that case, what you will do? So you can start go to the. Solar Winds, Solar Platform, Configuration Wizard again. You can run this wizard again. So let me delete this one. Delete the database. Close all information. Login, search, location, SLV, okay. Um, solar wind, admin, okay. I just added individually here. It's it's not here, but I don't know why it wasn't able to. But solar winds, solar winds. Admin, I think I made some mistake. Okay. Anyway, let's see again. Click next. So authenticate as a current login user. Next, solar in new, okay, click next. And then 
use a SQL Server account to access that database. New account. Create a new account. SQL Server account, okay. Why the existing account is not working? So use a Windows or Azure Active Directory account to access the database, right? So which is, this is the user. So I can use here slv.com next ip address skip salon log let's see So it seems like now it's working fine. So I'm installing everything through the service account. But I don't know why it's not working, but it's it wasn't able to find the Solarin service account here as a login. So that's why I manually created here with the service account. If you have this this kind of issues. I think before I did misspell something, that's why maybe instead of solar winds, I maybe use solar wind. That's why maybe. But right now it's working fine. And if you look at here, I just refresh it, refresh this one. And database, you're gonna see it's created zero one and also it's gonna create another two database here shortly. And it's going to install. And so far, so good. Okay, this one is running almost last 20 minutes, 20, 20 plus minutes. Um, so it's 94% completed. We have to wait a little bit more. So this one is running almost 30 minutes and it's almost done. Yep. So it's done. So we are in this phase right now. So whenever this is done, I when I uh, just open the console, and if it doesn't open, in that case, we have to go through this. Um, we have to follow this instruction: all programs, Solarin, Orion console. Click the start. Click the start means on the server. Click start, and then what it says: all programs, Solarin, then Orion web console. So which is this one? This is something oh, solar winds. Perform. Web console, this one. Why is Still waiting here. All right, so this is done and it has a check mark la launch of web console. Uh, click finish. And it's going to be launch the web console.
So the first time is instruction is open web browser on your Orion server. Okay, set be the your IP address. Okay, log in the username, admin, and leave the password field blank for the first time access, and then you're gonna send the password. Create the new password for it. Okay, so. Polling method, same user as in and as in less polling. So there is two uh, polling method like as in base and as in less. So you can use both for as in. This will try to leverage the same as in found. Okay. And as in less, as in be of this. Okay. Same initial configuration. So the first thing is we first we have to start it with the settings and discover network with and also you're gonna you have to provide the ip address or submit so that's we're gonna now look at it here okay that's my better okay got it cannot connect securely to this page okay Okay, so we can we can log in this one, close this one on from the Google Chrome. So you can type the IP address, which is 10.15.15.18. And I can say HTTPS. Okay. When you say HTTPS, advanced process to this, I'm safe. Now it's showing. Okay, admin. So I just type the IP address of my Solarium platform, right? Or I can go with the host name. So if you go to the DNS server, you're gonna see here, um, reconnect. So you can look at it here. So Solar and Mon, this is the server I installed. So I can use this one as a URL. Not from here. Okay, any, anywhere. So you have to type first here. HTTPS long slash slash, right? So you're getting the same screen, like same page, right? Exactly same pages you are getting, right? So, and it's, it's pretty like, you know, you are the administrator, that's why you know the machine name, but if you want to disclose this URL for all users, the regular users, so you should have a like, easy name so how you can create it like on from your uh, dns server if you create a c name for it so right click on anywhere from your dns manager say new alias name or c name click here and then create alias name with say um, solar solar winds solar winds dot slb dot com so you say or another name, or you can say monitoring.slb.com, or you can say slbmonitoring.slb.com, whatever you want. And actual qualified domain name is, you have to go to the browse forward slb.com, and then from here you have to select, the actual one is this one, right? Actually this here. 
So this is our C name, alias name, but actually it's this one, right? So you want to disclose this one to the user, regular user. So the, whenever they type it, it's going to be forward to here. That's why it's called alias name or C name. So now, instead of typing this one, if you type https colon slash slash solar wind. I don't know what I put it here. Solar winds or solar wind? Solar winds. Okay. Solar winds dot slb dot com, right? See, you're getting the same page, right? So right now I'm in a different machine, any machine from any machine. It's not mean that you have to have sitting there now because installation is done. Now you're going to configure it. So two step installation is done. It takes about more than an hour. And now it's time to configure it. So uh, you can log in here the same way with the Not on this one, not this one, not this one. Say for example, you're logging the, this one. So. It's same. I'm just going to close the, all those connections. Okay. So the first username is admin. It's a default user and then you create the password. So we are going to provide the same password you remember. Because I don't want to make myself strong enough so okay they said it's not strong enough that's fine All right, so it's directly taking me to the discovery page. All right, so you're here. We are ready to start our discovering. So I, we can go settings and network discovery. Or we can start here. So since it's already forwarding me to here, you see settings, network discovery. Okay, start. Okay, so IP address range or subnet, which one you want? By the subnet or the IP address range? So subnet is pretty easy, subnet. So subnet IP address in CIDR format, which is, you see here, CIDR format. That means your, um, You can look at here. So this is the format. So we have the IP address and I can show you here. See? First one is this one, right? This is one of ours. So assign this one here and then add subnet you can add multiple subnet whatever you want 
and then I'm going to look at what else we have. VLAN is okay. Oh no, just copy this one and paste it here, and then add subnet, another subnet, and now this one and Y, which is this one, right? Add. So we are using four subnet total, but actually two subnet we are using and another two is, is reserved, it's not used any, it's not used any, uh, we, we, we didn't use it yet, but if we use it, it's gonna be discovered automatically like this, this one. So if you have a like 30 subnet, 50 subnet, 100 subnet, you can just add it by like this. And click next. So you can discover you can you can discover with IP range like for example ten dot fifteen dot zero dot one two say two fifty four and then another one based on your subnet. Or you can add with the subnet with CIDR, which is this format. And also you can you can search a specific IP address, just only one IP address. And also Active Directory, add Active Directory domain controller to query. So if you want, so you can add your Active Directory. IP address or host name should be DNS resolve, okay. So our Active Directory is this one, right? This is the Active Directory, right? So Active Directory is this one, dot slv.com. And then credential, credential name, um, whatever. So in that case, you should be use the service account. administrator account and the password. So in that case, I'll highly recommend to use not instead of administrator use uh, the service account, the one we created, but I am not using the uh, service account here because my service account doesn't have that much privileged access. I have to add it, which is like, I need more time. And also have to make some plan what kind of privileged access I'm gonna provide with my service account. So that's why temporary I'm using administrator. But in your case, you should use um, service account and provide required uh, permission. Test credential, you can test it. Yes, test succeed. Next. Okay. So it's gonna monitor your entire, you see here, everything components from your Active Directory. Finish. So Active Directory you added already. And then click next and click next. And now virtualization, add a VMware hypervisor or Nutanix. So VMware hypervisor or Nutanix, this is another virtualization, right? So you can add it. So for virtualization, we have to provide our um, vCenter information. So what is our vCenter information? SLV, this one, right? So I'm going to copy this one. And what you can do, um, let's add it. Uh, let's add um, administration, the service account. I'm going to add the service account groups as administrator here. So administrator, um,
Florence monitoring service account and you can say SLV and searches SolarWinds admin and save it. So, so, so what happened? It's not added. Okay. I'm not going to put any description. Let's say SLV search. Solar. SLV. Then you can say solar winds. I don't know why. Why is it doesn't show? Okay, let me. Oh, okay, sorry, because I have to re-log in again. That's why. Because long time I didn't use it. That's why. So the groups. Administrator. Add a member count. So I can save. So Solaron admins is already saved here, you see. So now we can go back to SW and also in here. Which one you want to add? P Center, Neutronics, Hyper V, multiple Neutronics cluster, or standalone ESXA host. It depends on you what you want. So in, in, in our case, we have a B center. I'm going to add the B center, right? Select the B center and click, click next. IP address or host name. So what is the B center name? SLB.com, right? Select the credential. New credential. Credential name B Center Login with Solar Wind Service Account. Okay. Solar Wind Service Account. So username is Solar Winds admin. Add SLV dot com and password. So we are using the same password again and again. So now verifying your credentials, please wait. You have to wait. Add a virtual object for monitoring. Okay, so in here it says CPU threshold, but global settings is a by default settings. If you want to keep it, you can keep it. It's not an issue. And you can say finish. Finish, okay. So we center added successfully. Click okay. Okay, it's just showing this one here, but 
I have to go back here, but solution is done. Now click next as isn't. So check existing node pulling by an agent for node change and update. Check all existing pulling agent. Check only specific set nodes pulling agent. Okay, click next. Okay. So it's added total to public and private. So we save and click next. Windows credential is administrator. And plus, if you want to add more one, I can add another one, new credential, credential name. Windows CRD credential for uh, credential with solar wind solar wind service account. So username is solar wind. A D M I N, right? Red SLB dot com. So I can do SLB dot com or maybe SLB slash this. You see, the, the, here is the instruction and then the password. So I have both credentials and click next. Monitoring setting. Manually set up monitoring after device are discovered or automatic monitoring based on the defined monitoring settings. You can go with this one. What is the defined monitoring? You can say next. And check mark it. Okay, click next. So what is gonna check on the volume level? So you can you can check and check floppy disk, RAM, removal disk, compact disk. Okay. So click next. So and just schedule task if you want. Okay, click finish. And click next. So now it's the discovery settings. Um, now is discovery schedule. How many times you can schedule? You can say hourly, well, it's not once, hourly or daily. Daily, so really what time? It's 12 a.m. every night. Yes, run this discovery now and then say discover. So if I do the discover, it's gonna take like five to 10 minutes time to discover, you see? It's already discover one, it's, it's going to discover now. So, so far, no discover one. So it's going to be discover all of your equipments, virtual machine, physical machine, your SXA host, your B center, any kind of appliance. Everything is going to be discovered based on your uh, limit. You see here already node discover five. Nodes means it's counting each machine, like virtual machine or physical. Each and every one is a node. Or if it's found any other device, like a network device, that's also count as a node. So it will give you a overview.
So we have to wait again until it's finished. All right, so the discovery is done. Network discovery is done now. And summary, if you look at the summary, Top 10 summary, let's see. Right. So it shows all the BMs. You see the SXF host has a, some issues. DC1, DC2 has some issues, alert. And top 10 nodes by average CPU load. So <clears throat> it's showing you the options, the CPU load. So the highest one is 24. So it's gonna be show you 10. So you, you can change it like top 10, top 20, top 15, as top 10 nodes by percentage, uh, pre um, percent memory used. So this is by, by the memory use. This is by the uh, CPU use. So the memory use you show you, you see here, it's ninety percent now. So that's why you need a monitoring tools. Now you know through your monitoring tools. If you have a four hundred server, five hundred server, five thousand server, it is not possible. You can just log in each and every server and see what's the performance and how much the utilization. It's not possible, right? So this is. Um, one place this this is like from one place you can monitor all of your servers and if you look at on the ten, top 10 or top 20 it's going to show you which one has like highest consumption for memory for cpu for storage you see the disk physical memory is 91 percent virtual memory is this so we have to increase the memory here And also the disk, you see, this is the disk level, this is the memory or physical memory usage. So through this, you can monitor a lot of stuff and also you can check here, um, virtualization. So it's just gonna show you the BMR B center, you see. All the BMs on this host. And if you, if you click here, it's gonna show you status is critical. So this is the server, I have a critical, right? If you click here, it will show you in details what's happened. Okay. So picket loss. <clears throat> it show you in details what was the problem. The battery inside the machine, it gonna shows everything. So in here, physical machine shows okay. You see, this is the SXA host physical machine. So host, this is the network issues. You see here, um, if you look at all the way down, node is critical. Why node is critical? It will show you. So two server has a lot, 23 of them is like down and three server is up on this host. And you see the host one is network st status. This is the network, right?
Active Directory. Okay, so the application critical two is down. What is two is down? The DNS server. So the application has some issues. So if you expand it, DNS server problem. So based on that, you can just do the troubleshooting what's going on. And alert, if you click on the alert, you know, see here, critical. So the node status, notice warning and critical. So you, you can select the one thing and you can do the like, Oh, those are the default one. Those are the default and uh, you can um, create, you can customize it by yourself. So the manage SMTP server, manage. So if you want to like uh, send alert to your email, then you have to configure the SMTP. So for all kinds of settings, you can just go to the settings, then all settings, and it's gonna show you this. From there, you see the get started, discovery central. So if you want to add more node individual, you can, you can, you can do it from here. You can add VM or Hyper-V again. So we did it first time discovery, but after that, if you need more, like you added another vCenter or another new node, so you can go with this or another network, node group management, manage node, manage virtual device, manage group voice, and manage polar, manage maps, um, manage as in, like <clears throat> you can check the as in deployment, like it's deployed who's where and like which, because whatever the Windows machine discovered, it's already installed as an And if it is not installed, you can go to the manage as an And so the alert re, alert report, manage alert, manage report, configure default and send email action, manage alert action, again, manage SMTP server. So first, I'm going to go to the SMTP server and add a SMTP server. Okay. Default hostname and or IP address. Hostname or IP address is means, it means, it means, it means, it means, it means. So it means your SMTP server FQDN. So provided. And what is the port number? This is the port number. Okay. Use SSL. Email execution timeout under seconds or something, or you can have more seconds. And this SMTP server required authentication, yes, basic authentication. What is the username? What is the password? Confirm password. So username is this, and I know that what is the password for that. 
So I'm going to set the password here. So basically I'm doing this one. So email address and then SMTP key. Secondary SMTP server, if you want secondary, I don't have it. So that's fine. Okay. So my SMTP server is configured. Now I can go back, all settings. Manage alert. Now, here is the template. Manage alert, here's the template you can create. So for example, um, there's a lot of alert. So VM level alert, host level alert, Okay. Node is down, node is up. So for example, this is on already, right? Node is down. But if you want, if you want like customize, customize way, node is up and node is down, node is rebooted. So for example, this one, um, if you want to have your own one with some specific group, so Node rebooted, right? So you can say, um, duplicate it. Select this one and then duplicate. Okay. So copy of node rebooted. Now you can have, you can say, manage man node rebooted. Okay. Enable on or off. And, and, Evaluate the trigger condition by one. So reboot condition. So it, sh it should like disconnection or reboot or shutdown all the time. You should trigger a lot with every 10 minutes. Like if you say zero, zero minutes, that means if the machine is sometimes a uh, machine is okay. It's not restarted, but somehow it can have a network interference and maybe for some few seconds network is down and then it's gonna alert you the server is rebooted or server is shut down. So that's why to avoid this, you should like say at least 10 minutes. So if it is, or maybe five minutes, within five minutes, if something goes wrong, as a critical and okay, then next, Now here, trigger condition. So let me show you here some alert configuration. Okay, so what we have to do, node is selected, then the trigger alert, all child condition must be satisfied and this option, see node status is equal to down. Node status is equal to up. Okay, so that's what we are going to do now. And all objects in my environment. If you want, you can have the following set of object. Select the field, you can say
you can do the specific this is the way you can customize it so, so you can select say for example this one this one this one if this one is down and this one is down so you can do the customized voice or you can do the global which is just all together it is up to you and advanced option At a single value component from the command there. What is this? Node status equal to okay, node status equal to right. So what are you gonna do node status? Your status, this one. So status is equal to up, oh sorry, down. So node status is equal to down. Okay, and then click next, which is going to be trigger the alarm, right? It's a condition. And then the next one is. reset condition so reset this alarm automatically after 84 seconds non reset condition trigger this alarm trigger condition is met Okay, so this default one. Click next. Time of day. Alert is always enabled. No schedule needed. A specific time of day goes. Okay, so you can say any time, right? Because we need any all the time. And trigger action. The next is a trigger action. Okay, so now. It's going to send you an email, right? So you have to configure the email. Edit. So send an email page alert node name, whatever the node is. Is machine virtual machine or physical machine has reported that one should be the subject line and two and CC. So, two, let's say, for example, I want to send it to here. The name of the sender, default sender name. So default sender name, we're gonna set it later on. Message, what should be shown on the message? Node uh, rebooted at this time. So if you want, you can customize more, customize on it. SMTP server. So this is the SMTP server. Uh, time of day, no additional schedule time or special time. 
at the schedule. So execution time do not execute action and the alert has been acknowledged already. So if you, it's gonna be send the notification, but if you acknowledge it, then it's not gonna send you anymore. Repeat this action every X minutes. So if you don't acknowledge it, so every how many minutes is gonna send you the notification. You can say every hour, say four hours. Every four hours is gonna send you the notification. Save change. Now, what is this one? Same thing every four hours. Just copy up, take up this one and set change. Next. Now reset setting, add an action. Add an action. Send email, right? Configure action. Server is up to This email. Send the details, sys network, performance monitor. Okay. Multiple servers.com. SMTP server. Time is everything is okay. Add action. So for this one, what you can do is this one trigger alarm, right? So if you look at here, what is should send email to this one, right? Okay. So you can have your node like this. And then on the body, what he wants to do? This is a message. The subject is this one. So I'm going to cancel this one. And this is action. OK, it's already. Added so I can just change it, and in here, name of the action is this is you can say this node. node. Issue has been this note. Uh, sorry, this note is up. This note. This note is up again. It's up to you how you can organize it. You can say up or up again, something whatever. And the message body, you can say alert.
Is this said it okay? It's about everything is done. Actually, you don't need to do anything. Step change. Okay. Next. Is a summary and then submit. Okay. So you just configure only one, which is management node network. So you, you, you can you can like set up like in this way, multiple one from the template. You can just duplicate it and configure it. And here's all the alert is showing, like already you see CPU utilization is already, so already enabled. So based on this, you can configure it, all other. template. So manage alert, configure default send email notification. So default 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 participant to send it to this email address since I'm going to monitor this one. Okay. And default sender details, name of the sender, reply address. Reply address, do not reply at SolarWind. Monitoring. That's something, whatever you want. Name the sender. Or in here, you can say um, solar winds alert at slb.com and name is <clears throat> alert. Password for this one. Oh, sorry. The password should be this one. I made the mistake. It should be this one, this one. Okay. I made a mistake here. Should be this. And this is the SMTP relay 587, 587. Okay, select the value between 32 to 600. Okay, email execution timeout. Okay, so let's say 100. So what the issue is? So let me open here, go to the all settings. And I made one mistake, which is manage SMTP server in this one. Actually, I made the pro mistake here. I need this one as a password. Okay. All right. So now try it again.
Okay, it doesn't matter actually whenever you work for a company, your company will have your SMTP server and you're gonna get the information here. So just provide the SMTP server name here and that, then that's all. So you see I'm, I'm getting email from the Beam backup, but for this one, it's actually each and every application has a different, different settings. So this is SolarWind. So SolarWind settings is um, default is dependent. All right, so in the dashboard, also in the all setting, under the all settings, there is some other things, which is, um, user accounts, so manage your accounts, manage credentials, Okay, now in this solar winds, who will be able to log in? The, only the admin, right? So without admin, if you want to add a Windows group, add a new account or Windows group, add a new group account. Okay, so test active directory connection. Yes, so username. Search for an account or use domain slash group name format. So I have a group name here. Group. She said me, right? So I can add this one here. Group name admin. But I have to use a cell V first and then this slash and search. Okay, so I can add this one here, or I can add all of them if I want. Like next, I'm just giving an example. So, whoever the member of these three groups, they will have the, the, this. Uh, access now i'm going to configure it's loading it's just taking a little bit of time okay so those groups will have these kind of permissions now number of item they they can be uh, like they can uh, able to see and it's a different different types of permissions here you can enable and disable you can enable and disable is up to you so I'm just leaving everything default. And also the default item menu is here. What items they can able to see. And default summary view. So you can customize, you can do the customized summary here. Default network device default summary view so you can edit it and also you can have a customized like based on the group say hr group and uh network group and like your developer group so you can have a different different groups here so instead of providing them the home view you can give them like different view okay maybe they can see only the no details they can see only the it's up to you submit So Solarin has a lot of options. If you can spend some time 
So you can understand actually the basic things I already shows. So which is here, you can provide the permission and All settings again. So manage node, manage group. You can manage. You can create multiple groups. The groups I've talking, talking uh, I was talking about, which is like different different service area or your like different departments. User accounts view, dashboard view, add a new view. You can be, create a new view for through this, and also the details here. Okay, database details, pulling engine details, platform details, deployment details, license details. If you click your license, you can see the what kind of license you have. Yeah, what kind of license? It's a 30 days left, right? So you have a 30 days license. You can see the details of your, what you can monitor. And then, Settings again. So most of the time you have to spend time for, um, so this is the view, right? Manage dashboard view. So most of the time you have to spend time for um, the customize the alert. You can make a different, different shape of different, different condition of alert. Top 10, all IS status, all SQL status, all exchange status, the cloud summary. So if you have a cloud environment, you can do the cloud configuration. And if you click on the summary, okay, anyway. So for the managed dashboard, you want the classic, you want system read only, and also here is a lot of other options. You can add, remove, you see here, add application, active directory summary. See, you can add more here and also you can remove from here. So this is the main dashboard and these two in the no warning critical so we have some critical alert on the BMR side also on the window side you see up up how many is up all those are up this is all are down so if you see something is down it's, it's not down actually it's critical so why is it critical if you click here you're gonna you're gonna able to see it you'll be able to see it So I'm going to show you the last one, last thing again. I want to show you customize option again, and then we'll be done here. Okay. So this is the this is this is has, this server has a lot because of virtual data center has issues, and the server has issues with the network has a lot. So we you can just go inside and you can see what happened. Running or critical state. And also you can see the CPU consumption. It has a four CPU. So you can see all those like very in details of each and every machine. And also you see here, there's also the management of course is monitoring. So I'm showing you again, if you want to configure the alert, you have to go to the alert configuration. And then here is the all default one. If you want any one of anyone from them, like say uh, 60 days, CPU has less than 60 days capacity left. So alert is gonna alert like within the next 60 days, if there will be any issues, you're gonna show you a lot so you can customize it, the duplicate, and then you can have your own name.
it's a kind of forecasting. And so you see, there's a lot of, if you click here, you're gonna see AWS, Azure. This is a group is down, high CPU utilization on top. So you can create customized high CPU utilization with top 10 process. So you can just select it and then say um, duplicate the way we created the first one. And then you can have your own name, you can customize it. And also you can customize the top 10. So that's all about um, solar wind monitoring tools in, uh, installation configuration, and also configure the alert monitoring, right? So that's all. Uh, I hope you guys um, learned something at least for monitoring tools. And you can you will be able to um, implement in your environment. And if you like this video, please uh, make some comments and give a big thumbs up. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel and I'll see you in another video. Thank you, bye.